All right, YouTube, today we're gonna to be breaking down one of the bigger rounds of search that we had throughout the entirety of the COD Champs weekend. This comes in the LAT match, uh, game five. This is gonna be round eight. This is a huge round because obviously we are up 4-3 in the search and destroy. And I like to call this type of situation a dagger round because you're either going up 5-3, which is a more comfortable lead, or it's tied at 4-4 going into those final few rounds. And you know they're gonna have a little bit of more momentum uh, going into that because they know that it was such a huge impact impactful round uh, that they had just won. So for us, this was a really, really big round. We were on defense here on Karachi, and the big thing to note is uh, the LET uh, got a streak here. So it's Nasty who ended up getting a cruise missile in the previous rounds. And what they're gonna do is they're gonna get uh, some B-side control with this. Obviously, uh, it's a really, really powerful tool when you have a streak and search, especially on this map where you can basically just get uh, site control for free, get the bomb down. And for the offense, it's pretty guaranteed that once you get that bomb down, uh, that you're gonna be winning that post plan it's i think 86 percent or something like that uh in terms of post plant win percentage on the offense when you plant b uh so this is a huge retake out of us and you'll see what happens here so obviously as you see here ag is going to climb up to the belk go to top uh ac and then jump up to the top third level and this is a really really impactful timing because he's able to get over to this top third I am prone over here before, you know, anyone at the top three area coming up these stairs can really see him. Uh, so it's kind of a hard clear that they need to uh, be aware of. And what you have over here is you have Brandon uh, watching his dome push out. So he can either go at the barrels over here, watch top third, you know, the right side of top third for, for AG or, you know, the left side of top third if AG is going to be prone uh, going this way if he's prone going this way you know a or brandon can watch the top third from this perspective so uh, either or is fine and then we obviously have ken and ant playing towards the a side over here you know top fire and low lights so uh, this was the setup for us in this specific round regardless they do see him in the streak at this moment so you know even though we had the setup we knew that they had a streak and they could use it at any point in time it most likely was going to be this round so regardless we are able to get in positions to stay alive from the streak even though they're able to get this site control you know ag is able to stay alive inside fountain uh brandon goes to the you know the spawn uh room over here so everyone on our team is able to stay alive in the streak obviously they try and get yeah, either ken or ant towards fire over here but they're safe from the streak being inside top fountain over there so we know that you know we had to give up b side you know ag's calling it from the top fountain over here he realizes that they have already got this site control so all we have to do is play retake at this moment so uh what ant is going to do is he's going to climb up top ac so he, you know the really big important a uh, factor for this retake is you want to be able to make sure that you can sort of make it mixy towards this top three area because uh, it's a, just an easy way for them to get eyes on bomb uh, from that vertical position. So being able to contest that uh, from the defensive side is just such an important part of the retake uh, going into this B site. And what he's able to do is, you know, he's able to get this kill on Nasty. And that's such a huge kill because they're not ready for it. Uh, I'm not sure why they, they don't have eyes on uh, the top AC or, or top, you know, three hop at, at all. Um, and unfortunately, you know, Nasty tries to pick it up, but it's just way too late and Ant's able to get a free pick on him. And this is uh, a setup now that makes them play super, super tight towards Coop. They haven't crossed over towards bridge. As you see, you know, Dan is the only one towards the bridge and he's more towards the scaff side. He's not even playing towards, you know, safe over towards the bridge. Uh, you know, they, they planted and they decided rather than going and post planning, you know, either one or two guys towards bridge, they're just gonna play for top three and top Coop. But the big part of that is, you know, Ant was still able to get towards the top AC and get a kill top third. So if you're going to be able to do that, you need to be helping towards the top three area. And they just weren't doing that. So that was a, a big mistake on their part. Ant now sees uh, Ghosty here, top scaff. And this is a big, big call out because, uh, you know, AG is, is trying to clear this, this bridge area and he's not seeing anything. So at a certain point, we just realized that they're just trying to play towards this coop, you know, top third area. And, you know, Ant gets Dan weak. He runs at him. Uh, probably in hindsight, a little bit too eager to try and get this kill uh, because, you know, Dan's able to run away and he's actually able to sneak underneath him, underneath the scaff over here, go to the other side. And he's able to get some help from Dota Seas, who's playing inside Coop uh, towards, you know, the bomb watching area in the, the window up here. So this is a really big 3v3 at this moment because once again, retakes aren't really the easiest thing for the defensive side, especially when uh, we don't have top three control still because, you know, Ant got the kill, but he it ran off try to get the guy's scaff and now at this moment we're thinking okay they're playing coop 
Ken's even trying to think about possibly getting on bomb and just looking at uh, the window up here. I'll show you what he's looking at. So he's trying to look at the, the post plant window. So you see a lot of people that play inside the coop window, try and jiggle peek, get people off of bomb because we realize what they're trying to do with this post plant. They're really just trying to play safe inside that building, make sure they have eyes on bomb and try and you know kill us while we're trying to defuse. Uh, you know, Ken doesn't go for the defuse here. He's just playing for anyone that's trying to jiggle and maybe scam uh, out of their position. So that's what he's doing there. He does see that, you know, Joe just, he's jumped out. Uh, so he's trying to clear both angles. The biggest kill here, I think, is what Brandon does over here. So Brandon has a really good read in this specific moment to cover P1. So what he does is he realizes a really good play in case they do have top three control, which they do, is for one of the other guys to jump out bricks or to jump out top AC and flank through their mid cut and try and kill them this way because we are so focused on this coop area. And honestly, this is one of the biggest reads of the tournament to to in a 3v3 scenario where we had 30 seconds to defuse this bomb for for Brandon to make this sort of read is is actually amazing because he knows a really good play on the offensive side would be you know to hit out p1 like this or jump out of top third he reads it perfectly kremp was going to be trying to do this he jumps out of you know top breaks over here expecting to just have a free route to the mid cut brandon picks him off makes it a 3v2 the rest of these guys now we know it's a 3v2 we're just aping at this moment ken knows that joe is going to be somewhere you know towards his left side coop he chows him, gets a you know point blank kill, really nice. And then lastly, AG on the top ridge, he's able to find uh, Dan who goes towards the, the right side of Coop over here. All three kills go at the exact same time basically. And it's just an absolutely insane retake out of, out of the boys because you know, again, 86% of the time, once you were playing towards B, you were winning the round. And to be able to be part of that 14% at COD Champs in a huge 4-3 you know, dagger round game five, uh, this was probably one of the biggest rounds that we had, especially, you know, with how we were playing in search uh, throughout the entirety of, of stage four, being able to adjust mid round because of the cruise and then being able to teamwork effectively on this retake, realize where they're at, realize what they might be trying to do and, you know, focusing on, you know, what we want to do in this retake. It was just perfect. So a really good job out of the boys. We get the V fuse, end up going up 5-3. It gives us a little bit of momentum. We end up winning uh, the Karachi Search Game 5 for the Reverse Suite versus LAT. Thank you guys for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed this analysis video, and I'll see you guys in the next one.